In today's video, I'm gonna talk you through two keys to hitting your driver straighter. Okay, so let's start with the absolute basic, T-height. And I know that might sound really crazy and really simple, but it is, it's that simple. The incorrect T-height causes so many problems for players. Now, let's quickly break that down. I see a lot of players seeing their driver down low. Now the concept behind this when I speak to them is, oh well, I'm just trying to you know, hit the golf ball straight. If I tee it down lower, I don't get it as far off line. Now, yeah, partially true. Not necessarily for every single player, but for some players that, okay, that can be true. Um, we increase the spin on the golf ball, which kind of helps it stay on line a little bit. Um, more often than not, players don't actually hit it as hard. The club doesn't move quite as fast when it's that low to the ground, the teeing height. And more than anything else, we tend to see a steeper attack angle. It's very, very hard, not impossible, but very, very hard to hit up on the golf ball when it's teed so low. Your subconscious, your brain, your golfing brain, your awareness will not allow you necessarily to stay back behind the golf ball and have the golf club traveling on an upward arc when the ball's teed down so low. So we tend to see this leaning of the shoulder steepening of the shaft, pitch down to the golf ball, the club head has a greater attack angle down, and we kind of squeeze them out. As a result, we get a lot of spin on the golf ball. More often than not, we tend to see players hit like a big left to right shape. Now, getting the appropriate tee height has a huge, huge impact on your face, your attack angle, all those things being neutral or square at impact. So first things first, we want to tee the golf ball at least, for me, three quarters of the golf ball above the crown of the driver head there. So if we sort of set this up here. So to begin with, we sort of look down there. I've got just almost the whole golf ball sitting up above the crown, which is the, the top part of the golf club here. Now, of course, if you're a driver of the left shoulder and you have a steep attack angle, I suggest putting some tape on top of your driver because you're going to sky some shots until you get comfortable with hanging back behind. Now this particular training exercise I ask players to do, guys I won't lie, it's a prick of a training exercise because you're gonna swing steeply. But it doesn't take long for your brain to pick up the, the notion that I don't like having the clubs swing down too much and the golf ball pop sky up in the air and go 100 meters. And so over time, generally within a singular range session, we will begin to see players working this way more. So getting the appropriate tee height is going to encourage you to hit up on the golf ball. That's important because I often see players when they hit up, have the ability, as I'm showing you with this right hand here, to square the club face that much easier. It's a lot harder to square the club face with the driver when you're working in a steeper attack angle because you're not going to work a steep attack angle from behind the body because you're going to hit the ground. You're going to work that steep attack angle from outside to inside and now we have our face pointing too far left or we'll reorientate it too far right and we end up hitting that slice. Now the second key, and this is really really simple again, is rotation. Far too often, and this is a great angle to show this, I see players lack rotation. This left shoulder barely gets underneath the chin line when they're holding their driver. They just simply pick the hands and arms up. Some players will try to get the hands higher, but we don't create rotation. If we don't create rotation, we then rely solely on our arms to move as fast as they can into the downswing. That makes it particularly difficult to control the club face because arms are moving, hands are moving, lots of little moving parts, and the smaller moving parts are harder to control than the bigger parts, being your torso and arms as a general. So I like to tell my players, we're going to work on trying to get this left shoulder to feel like it's moving over to our right foot. This enables me to create greater rotation. This will also enable me to shallow out my backswing. Put myself in a bit of a, let's say a flatter position. And then from here, I can work into the downswing. I keep greater control over the club face. That stems, and that ability stems from creating some additional rotation. Now, 
I'm gonna throw in an added bonus. So let's quickly recap before we do. Number one, we need to get the appropriate T-height. So, so important that we give ourselves the opportunity to hit up on our drives. Number two, we want to ensure that we are creating adequate rotation. That's this left shoulder working, the feeling of like it's getting over our right foot here. And the final part is the role of your right elbow. Now, when we understand the role of the right elbow, my players in person gain greater control of their hands and therefore greater control of their club face. So let's quickly touch upon that. Okay, so the right elbow, the reason why I wanted to give you this sort of bonus information is because when we can control this, we can control the direction in which the club's moving, which gives us the ability to hit the golf ball straighter. So for those of you that are increasing the rotation in the backswing, there will be a want and a tendency to then recoil back towards the golf ball, which then causes the arms to separate away from the body. Club head gets outside the line, and we end up pulling across it, and we actually go back to steepening that attack angle. But if we're aware of our right elbow in our downswing, we can actually get the benefit of the rotation and then add in the ability to control this club face and the swing path very, very easily. So what I'm gonna ask you guys to do, when we make our practice swing, we're gonna to swing to the top, we're gonna to create this extra rotation. My left shoulder here, feel like it's getting close to my right foot. My right elbow from here is going to work into my rib cage. That's gonna be my feeling, my right elbow towards my rib cage. And even in my practice swings here, you can see that the club's approaching from an inward path. By the time I go to full speed, I'm actually gonna be a bit more neutral through the hitting area here. And as I then rotate my body through, my club face is gonna come through that much squarer. And interestingly, I haven't had to do a great deal with my hands to square that club face up. That's kind of taken care of itself because I'm moving the bigger parts more functionally. So if that makes sense, the torso, the arms, if they move, there's a lot less work that my smaller muscles have to do. And that is therefore gonna make it easy to control my club face, which makes it easier to hit the golf ball straighter. Guys, as always, I appreciate you taking the time to watch today's video, and I do hope it's been helpful. I do hope that you've picked up some information that helps your game improve. As always, please leave a comment below. I'll be more than happy to get back to any comments that are posted up, any questions that you might have. If you have an idea or if you'd like some help with your game specifically, please feel free to put a comment or reach out to me on the Skillist app. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and until next time, happy golfing.